Um, and the irony of this is, we talked about Miami. He went to Miami with D Wade and Bosch back in 2010. And before he joined Miami and after he left Miami, he had never played Miami in the playoffs. And yet here we are in his first return to the finals and his first finals in the Western Conference. He plays against the team and the organization that helped him get his first chip. We know there's a lot of history there. Obviously, Spolster is still the head coach. Pat Riley still runs things. What are your thoughts going into the series, and, and how do you feel these teams match up? Um, first of all, you know, shout out to, to the Miami Heat. Uh, they had an amazing playoff run. Um, I, I don't think anybody expected them to do what they did. Um, you know, as much as I know we both thought they had a chance to beat Milwaukee, we didn't think they would demoralize Milwaukee, because that's what that was. They, that was blood sport right there, what they did to Milwaukee. Uh, I, I still stand on, I, if, if Giannis doesn't get hurt in game four, they're getting swept out of it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that just changed the, the momentum up a little bit. You know, you get the extra fight in you because you want to win for your brother because he's hurt or whatever. But I think if Giannis finished that game, they probably would have got swept. So you got to give the Miami Heat as much respect as you give anybody in, in, in this league. They played a, a tough series against the Boston Celtics. And, and Jimmy Butler even said it. They have more, they got more talent. They got the better players on, on that side. But Miami just played together. Grit, hard nose, physical, shooting the ball exceptionally well. Shout out to, to Swaggy T. We've been, we've, been, we've, been, we've been giving him his flowers, you know, this whole playoff run. I'm happy for him, you know, because I, I was a fan of his going into the draft and I wanted to see what he could do. And he got hurt, you know what I'm saying, a little earlier in the season. So that kind of, you know, changed things up a little bit. Kendrick Nunn started to get that, that run. But since he came back, he's showing you why he was drafted where he was. He was a great shooter. Um, he has so much energy, so much swag on the court. He's not afraid of the moment at all. Like he, what is he says? He's I'm a walking bucket. And he's absolutely right. He is a walking bucket. He put up 37 on the night. You know, last uh, in the last game, he had 19 in the closeout game. Like, it, it's just amazing what this kid has been able to do. I know Duncan Robinson's been up and down throughout the playoffs, but he's also came through. He was going, he was getting to the rack in, uh, was it, in, in, in the closeout game. And everybody, I'm looking like, yo, that's Duncan Robinson going to the basket? Like, yo, what's going on? So, you know, everybody is contributing. Dragic is playing amazing, um, running the floor, shooting the ball very well. He's playing defense. Jimmy Butler is really on his, his lockdown, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, defense. Like, he, he's doing his thing. And even when he's not scoring, he's helping out in every other area. And then Bam out of Bayou, the big man, like, you really got to give him his respect. Like, he is putting on for the Miami Heat right now on both sides of the basketball. I feel like every other, like, three plays, he got an M1 on a dunk or a leg because he's just finishing throwing it at whoever's in the paint. Like, this team is really good. Like, don't sleep. You know, and again, and even though, like, I, I really want to say, you know, the Lakers in five, but and I and I don't say it in a disrespectful way to the Miami Heat. Like I just say it like just because LeBron is on a whole nother level right now, like his mindset, like he he had a goal and he's he's closing in on the finish line and he's ready to come in and take that championship home. So I think it's just that has no, no disrespect to the Miami Heat, but I think they're a great team. I think they're gonna be good for a long time to come because they got a lot of good young talent mixed in with, with some really good veteran players. So I think that they're going to actually be a, a top team for a little while. But I just, you know, I just think that where LeBron is at right now, the mental space he's in, he's, he's coming for everything they say he couldn't have. I agree. He, he's playing phenomenal right now. And I'm on record as saying this back in January, um, you know, when we lost the legend Kobe Bryant, that at That's that moment, I felt like, at that moment, I felt like, as a nation, as just fans in general, we were all kind of rooting for the Lakers just because we know what it would mean for the for the memory of Kobe Bryant. And I still feel that way. I'm, I'm taking the Lakers in this series. Um, I really think it is going to go seven games, though. Um, and I do think that LeBron being on a mission, I think AD's got to be on his game throughout this series because this is going to be their toughest matchup. And that's not a knock to Portland, Houston, or Denver. But none of those teams possess the big man who could defend the way Bam Adebayo can, you know, and that that's going to force Anthony Davis to work 
on both ends of the court because we know Bam is a skilled offensive player as well. So AD is not going to get an opportunity to just take possessions off. He's going to have to be on his A game every minute he's out there. Um, I think same thing with LeBron. LeBron, without a doubt, is the best player on the court for, for both these teams. AD is the second best player on the court. But then after that, the depth of the Miami Heat make them so dangerous. And that's why we see them continue to wear teams down. As you mentioned, they took the soul from the Milwaukee Bucks because there was never a point in that series where the Bucks could overpower, overpower them or dominate them. Anytime the Bucs went on a little bit of a run, Miami punched them right back in the mouth and put them back in their place. Same thing happened with Boston. I thought throughout the series, Boston played them very well, but Boston continued to blow second half lead because this Miami team does not go away. They continue to battle you and they throw so many different bodies at you. And I think that's something that, that could help them in this series. You got to remember, you, you talk about Jimmy Buckets and well-deserved and he deserves all the credit and all the respect he's getting right now because people kind of shitted on his name. Uh, last year right but Iguodala has championship experience right Jay Jay Crowd is a tough defensive player and then you talk about the young guys Robinson um Tyler Hero you got veterans like Dragic you know if you want to go deeper on the bench you can bring in a guy like Kelly Olenek Olenek to give you some extra minutes off the bench so they've got so many different pieces I think the Lakers are going to really have to grind out this series to be able to win it they're going to have to deal with a little bit of adversity as well because again they're going to throw a lot of bodies at your stars. And there's going to be moments where maybe LeBron isn't shooting so well. There's going to be moments that Anthony Davis isn't really shooting so well. But you're going to have to grit it out. You're going to have to figure out a way to make it work. Uh, and let's not overlook the coaching in this as well. Spolstra is very experienced. He's been to four finals. He's won two finals. And historically, he's gotten the best of Frank Vogel. He eliminated him twice in the Eastern Conference playoffs. So there's going to be that chess match. There's going to be those moments, again, where – the Miami Heat are going to test the Lakers in ways that no other team has been able to test them yet, just yet. And that's why, for me, I'm, I'm taking the Lakers. I would love for them to win it for Kobe. I think it's going seven, bro. Now, the only, all right, so the only two things, because I do, I do agree with a lot of what you said. The only two things I will say, you're absolutely right. Spolstra did beat them in the playoffs twice, but he also had <laughs> that man, LeBron James, with him when he did it, who is now on Vogel's side. So that might help, you know, Vogel with the little edge on that one. Um, in regards to Bam, I will say this. Again, I love Bam. I think he's playing great. But Lakers going to cheat a little bit. We've seen what Dwight Howard was doing in the last round, you know, when he was guarding uh, Jokic. He did really well. I got to give Dwight Howard his props. You know, we don't get – we you know, because Dwight Howard, you know, sometimes he'd be on his BS. You know what I'm saying? We had, he had the dark years. But, you know, since he's been with the Lakers, he's been doing really well. He's playing really great basketball right now. And, you know, the beautiful thing, which kind of worked out in the Lakers' favor, was because Houston plays small ball and J. Bell McGee and Dwight Howard are kind of like the odd man now in that situation because there's really nobody for them to guard and they're not dominant offensive players like that to really, you know what I'm saying, for it to, to put any – type of pressure there in the game. So they were rested from the Houston series. So you come back in and now, you know, Dwight Howard, he was giving, he was giving Jokic fits, you know, and they, the Lakers took over and controlling the board. Cause remember coming into the series, Jokic was, was getting like 13 rebounds a game. I think in, in, in the series, he might've been at like six, seven a game. If, if that, like there was a lot, like he was not rebounding the ball. And that was an attribute to Dwight Howard being in the game and, and him playing well. There was a couple of nights where, you know, he had double-doubles or at least, you know, or close to double-doubles. You know what I mean? And he, he was playing really good defense on Jokic. So I think that's going to actually help and work in the Lakers' favor because you're right. He, he, he can guard, you know, Anthony Davis. He can make it tough on him and you have to watch him on the offensive side of the basketball. But – Dwight Howard can help out with a, with a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, Howard and McGee, and I don't know how much McGee will play in this series um, just because of matchups, but specifically yeah. Dwight Howard, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Vogel uses him because I'm, I'm of the thinking that if Miami is knocking down their threes, which we've seen them do when, when they're winning, of course, mm -hmm. the games that they've won when they're lights out shooters and they space the floor so well, it's almost impossible to play the Dwight 
play Dwight Howard because then you get these massive mismatches where Dwight is so far away from the basket, he's, you know, he's a non-factor. And I think there will be times that Vogel's going to have to say, look, AD's going to have to play the five against Bam, and we're going to have to just try to match up with some of these guys so that we don't give up the open threes. You know, one of the things, one of the reasons that I did like Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals is because Boston has this assortment of wing guys where they can just keep rotating and switching off, and you don't really give up the open threes. And it didn't even matter because – Tyler Hero don't need much room to knock down a three. You know, yeah. Duncan Robinson yeah. don't need much room to knock down a three. We've so, seen. <laughs> right. And and again, that's with the collection of, of wing players that Boston has who they're already playing small and they was having trouble chasing guys around. So if the if Miami isn't knocking down those threes, then yeah, you could leave Dwight out there all day long. You can abuse them on the boards and you can take big time advantage of second time, second chance shots, which is a key to why the Lakers are so successful as well. But if Miami is knocking down threes, even not even at a high percentage, if we're talking 35% three, it's going to be interesting to see how Vogel wants to distribute the minutes, who he wants to keep on the court, because then you can't be trading threes for twos. And Miami's one of those dangerous teams that they shoot the three well, but they don't just look for the three. They look to attack the basket first. And that's where you want Dwight to be in the game. But again, if they're knocking down threes, now it's like, all right, so now Dwight has been pulled away from the basket and they're attacking what are we willing to give up here? So it's going to be interesting to see how they use it there. Um, let me get you, I, like I said, I, I got Lakers winning in seven. You, you're sticking with Lakers in five? Yeah, I re- like I'm, I really feel like it's, it's not going to be a long series. Like I really do, you know, but I wouldn't like, but it, if it goes six, I wouldn't be surprised. But I, but I don't think, I don't think it's, it's going to seven. I feel you. I feel you. And we got a shout out to Andre Gudala, man. He's going to his six straight finals, man. Which is he's trying to get a LeBron record. He's trying to go, go for LeBron record. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's crazy, man, because it, it's 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 crazy to think about. Um, we know how important he was during the Golden State years. Mm-hmm. And then for him to land on this Miami team and be a big part, he had a big shot yesterday as well that really kind of put the game away for them. So I it, wanted him I'm, to come I'm, to the Lakers. Yeah, Lake, well, Lakers <laughs> wanted them. Say, yeah, Ron, exactly. Ron wanted them. They wanted exactly. them. So he, listen, and man, they was going to let him rest too. Do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's going to be so many interesting storylines as we talked about Braun. You done his Haslam. Ties. UD. Shout out to him. Right. Shout out to him. Um, Obviously, you know, it was well documented that Pat Riley wasn't happy when Braun left. And I don't know if they mm-hmm. patched up their relationship. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of things on the line um, on the Lakers side. As we talked about Dwight, this could be big for his legacy. Um, I personally Rondo. feel Dwight and Rondo. I personally feel Dwight is a Hall of Famer, and I think the ring will solidify it. Um, I think Rondo's a borderline Hall of Famer, but getting two rings kind of pushes you over the edge, over the top. And, and, that's, and that's crazy because I feel like we like I like I think Dwight Howard is a Hall of Famer already. Oh, whether I, he I was agree. a ring or I not, agree. but people don't give him that respect. And I'm like, yo, how could you? How, like he got three. Defensive player of the year was back to back to back. He made it to a finals. You know what I'm saying? Mad all star appearances, all defensive appearances, all NBA appearances. Like, how is Dwight Howard not a whole of Famer? Because people focus on the second half of his career. People forget, like, those first eight years in Orlando, he was the dominant force in the league as far as big yeah. men, right? And then when he goes to the Lakers, he starts to get a bad name. Then he goes to Houston and things go bad. And then he kind of bounces around the league. And so that's what everybody remembers. But as you mentioned, I mean, he's one of the premier defensive centers of all time in the NBA, yeah. not just of his era. And a ring, uh, two finals appearances makes the resume look great. He has an Olympic gold medal. He'll, he'll hey. if, they, if they win this one, that's a ring. So all these things just strengthen the resume. But I think yeah. even, even if they were to lose, to me, Dwight is still in the hall. This, yeah. this, the, does strengthen the case for Rondo a little bit more because I, I do think that Rondo's in a similar convo as, as Chauncey Billups, though I like Chauncey yes. more. I like Chauncey more, but they're in a similar two combo. Rings you can't deny. Right. Two rings makes it tough to keep them out. You know, we saw Chauncey didn't get voted in this past year. So, yeah. you know, it, we'll, we'll have to see, man. And this but, ain't um, one of those hanger on type of rings where right. you were just a, on he's the a, team. No. He's putting in work. Right. And I, you could argue he's a big part of the reason why they're dominant they're dominating he, the way they are he's one of their he's one of their best five players yes i i, I yes right so I, i'm I was pretty happy sure when he came back 
I'm pretty sure in those last six minutes of a close ball game, Rondo's going to be on the floor. So that that says everything we need to know about that. Exactly. But so um, get that ring, and it's, it, that's a, you got to put him in. Right, right. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned into Real Fans, Real Talk. Real 